the Church. I'm Jonathan McCormick. And I'm Adam Crispin. An Oral History of the Church is a conversational history podcast. This first volume is an oral history of the campus relocation of Golden Gate Baptist Theological Seminary's main campus from Mill Valley, California to Ontario, California. The school has a new name as of June 2016, Gateway Seminary of the Southern Baptist Convention. The 11th episode for this volume is an interview with Grace and Steve Howell. They are alumni, recent staff for the seminary's preschool, and currently local ministers in Mill Valley and Tiburon. I really enjoyed hearing their interview because they had been here in two different periods, Mm -hmm. so we have the contrast of the, the different time frames and the contrast of different programs. Yeah. Steve was a music uh, student and then came back and did his Master of Divinity. And Grace had the MAEL. Right. So between the two of them, they've seen a pretty wide uh, variety of the educational opportunities here at Golden Gate. Yeah. And they had also two very different slices of life when they came when they first came uh younger and uh, earlier in their uh marriage and then when they came back they had two kids uh one in preschool and one in elementary school uh so some significant difference there as well uh, interacting with how do you do this how do you navigate working and studying and doing ministry and yet being a, a healthy family together and involvement in different churches mm-hmm. in different roles in in each place you never step in the same river twice <laughs> that's right speaking of rivers let's listen to the howls give us their interview <laughs> this is adam crispin and jonathan mccormick interviewing stephen and grace howell on may 19th 2016 this interview is taking place at their home on the seminary campus in Mill Valley, California. Stephen and Grace, thank you so much for your time. No problem. Thank you for having us. <laughs> well, we're, we're excited to have you. You're our second married couple that we're having on the, the project here. Um, just to jump right in, if we can, how did you first hear about Golden Gate Baptist Theological Seminary? Well, uh, back in Missouri, Steve was working as a minister of music. We were in college, and um, we were nearing the end of college, and we started feeling like maybe he wanted to go to seminary and um, get a music degree. Mm -hmm. Uh, At the time, we looked at Midwestern, Mm because Midwestern is literally five minutes away from my family, and it seemed like kind of the uh, (laughs) no-brainer solution. But when we contacted Midwestern, and and we really appreciated this, they were very honest with us, and they told us that music is not their focus, and that if we really wanted to pursue music, we should look into other seminaries. Um, At the time, Golden Gate was the only Southern Baptist seminary that offered a Master of Arts of Worship Leadership degree, Mm -hmm. which was the only music degree that incorporated both traditional and contemporary aspects of worship. So that was really what drew us to come out and uh, visit Golden Gate. Mm -hmm. Since then, it's been, you know, many other seminaries have similar degrees, but at the time when we looked, it was pretty unique among Southern Mm -hmm. Baptists. When was this? This would have been in, well, we came in 2001 the first Mm -hmm. time, so we probably started looking in 2000, you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we visited that summer. We came on a a tour, Mm -hmm. and... um, Really, and in fact, we stayed in one of the studios down yeah. there and you know, visitor housing and all that, and um, visited with some of the professors and, and all that, the music faculty at the time, and felt like God was calling us out here. And so we started making plans for January of 2001. It was uh, kind of funny because I remember sitting on the bed in one of the studio apartments. I had never lived anywhere except my parents' house in Missouri, and then I went to college in Missouri. Mm-hmm. And so I remember sitting on the bed and both of us just looking at each other. And I said, I think we're supposed to come here. And it scares me to death because I had (laughs) never been anywhere like San Francisco, California before. Mm. Um, But it was it was pretty apparent that God was was leading us in that direction. A lot Mm -hmm. of affirmations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how did you first come to study or work here? 
Um, so you'd heard about it. You came out mm -hmm. for the, uh, the the preview, the tour, mm -hmm. and then how did that work out to to make that move and, and that change from living in Missouri to coming here to the Mill Valley campus? Well, I think that we just, um, like I said, when we came out to visit, it was pretty apparent that God was leading us here. The degree program really appealed to Steve. Mm -hmm. Um, he got to spend a lot of time with Dr. Gary McCoy, mm -hmm. um, and uh, that just what they talked about and, and what the degree incorporated really appealed to Steve. He had been working as a minister of music while we were in college. Mm -hmm. and a lot of what he did, he learned <laughs> kind of by doing on the fly, <laughs> and so yeah. the thought of getting some training was really uh, appealing, and then the degree was just really what you were looking for, yeah. Mm -hmm. That, um, I can't remember how many years it was, if it was like about three or four years that we served part-time at this church in Missouri, um, was long enough to recognize that this was something that God had really put a desire in our heart for, as well as to recognize how much we had to learn. Mm -hmm. And so that's what made seminary so appealing, was the opportunity to go and to grow in these different areas. And um, God had really given me a love for... Um, Ultimately, for him, and uh, but also um, for a wide variety of music, and that's mm -hmm. what we found in the degree program here at Golden Gate was a degree program in the mall, the Master of Arts of Worship Leadership, um, that really covered the spectrum from traditional music and choirs all the way mm -hmm. to contemporary ensembles, mm -hmm. which uh, actually at the time used to lead in chapel. Um, you know, it actually was a class at the time that mm -hmm. would kind of do that. And so, um, you know, that's what we found in that degree here. Once mm -hmm. we got here, um, uh, I look back on that degree. Um, obviously, we, we had come back a second time for yeah. a second degree. But that first degree, I, I lo always looked back on that with great fondness because everything that I took in that degree um, was extremely applicable. And having had that prior ministry experience could see, mm -hmm. oh, this would have been helpful. Mm -hmm. oh, this yeah. would have helped. mm -hmm. and, and how helpful that was then in the future. So, so when did you guys graduate when you done that first time that you guys came here like um, when when did you guys finish and then you guys moved away right we when did you graduated so and moved to a new situation that was a two-year it was degree. a two-year yeah two-year yeah. degree so you graduated in december of 2002 yes yeah and while we were here um i actually worked on campus mm -hmm. um which obviously is not what we came for but mm -hmm. it's its own story in and of itself so i can tell it if you want to it okay yeah. well you, it actually is it was an amazing it, it was an amazing god it was an amazing god opportunity because when we came out here we knew that i was going to need to work we didn't have children yet we knew that i was going to need to work steve was going to be a full-time student mm -hmm. and um so i really had a desire to work with kids i love kids and i wanted to you know, work with preschool kids, be a teacher. And as I started going on interviews, um, I was told over and over and over again that the the schools out here wanted a certain number of early childhood education hours, which I have a bachelor's degree, but it's in English. So mm -hmm. I don't have an early childhood education bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. um, and we just, we, we kind of got to the point where we were almost ready to drop out of seminary because we were out of money. Mm -hmm. um, the only jobs I was being offered were ones that I really we're not excited about secretarial. I mean, just for me personally, I was looking sure. for, I wanted to teach. Um, and we got to the point where, you know, we were getting pretty desperate. And Steve said to me one night, um, he was like, well, you know, Grace, they offer early childhood education classes here at the seminary. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could take classes here. You might have to work a job you don't love, but maybe you could take the classes so that when we leave, you would be qualified yeah. to teach. Yeah. I said, that's a great idea. So the next day I went and I, um, I met with Shara Melick, who at the time was in charge of the early childhood education program as well as the preschool. Mm -hmm. I had no idea there was a preschool even on campus. <laughs> I just went to talk to her about the classes. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm kind of explaining everything to her and um, telling her about my desire to take these classes. And her eyes just lit up. And she said, if you sign up for these classes, I can hire you at the preschool. And I said, there's a preschool? I had no idea. So it actually worked out where um, she had a job opening. It was kind of a floater teacher at first where I would kind of help in different classrooms. Mm -hmm. I helped teach art, which was not my forte, but I learned, you know. Sure. Um, but And then that, that kind of turned into where I became an assistant teacher and then finally a lead teacher at the preschool. Um, but during that time, I got to work full-time on campus, 
because I was working full time on classes or on campus, all of my classes were free. Mm -hmm. So I got the early childhood education and administration certificate for free. And Steve got half off his tuition. And so it just was, I mean, we were really at the end of our rope and I was about to take a secretarial position in a public school just to make ends meet Mm -hmm. when I went to talk to her about taking these classes. And then it just all fell into place. Perfect situation. And it just, it really, to me, it cemented my calling that I love teaching preschool and so even after we left here I taught preschool in Seattle Mm. Um, and then when we came back the second time I was able to teach again at Mm. GGA so it was really really amazing how God Mm. brought it all about were you working for the seminary at all uh, during your first tenure here Um, no I didn't well um, actually there was a brief stint where I was uh, kind of a teacher's assistant for Dr. Gary McCoy uh, which I really enjoyed because like at the time they had a a piano lab and things Mm -hmm. like that that I got to maintain and Mm -hmm. to do a lot of work with um, music and technology and things like that Um, even some of the equipment uh, well one particular item that was on the platform even when we came back the second time Mm that the bass amp that our bass players Mm -hmm. have used I went out and purchased that oh, yeah. at the time, and it was pretty trippy to come back. He's still there. Ten years later, go. Yeah. <laughs> there like, it is. That? You got a good quality one. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, um, yeah, that was a great experience, but uh, that was my only on-campus. And then employment. for his TFE, he worked at a, a area. Well, I say area, a Bay Area church mm-hmm. with one of the professors at the time in a kind of a paid. Um, internship for his TFE. That was out in Livermore. I worked at, uh, I served part-time, kind of an intern capacity at uh, Trinity Baptist Church in Livermore, California. Yeah. Under, it was a, a great experience. Under Merrill Smoke, who was a music professor yes. at the oh, time. right. Yeah. Yes, I've seen his name around on yeah. various things. And Dr. McCoy is retiring this year, yes. is that right? Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. So they, I believe they've honored him once or twice yes. recently. Yes. Yeah. Did you get to go to any of that? Yes. Um, both he and uh, Don Bell had a retirement uh, ceremony and celebration together mm-hmm. uh, in the chapel, and mm-hmm. I had the opportunity not only to attend it, but also to speak at it. Mm-hmm. And so it was a great opportunity to honor Dr. Gary McCoy because uh, he was very formative in my life. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Quite a, a, a mentor mm-hmm. and uh, an and example. Still is. And still, still is. is. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, very thankful for. Certainly the seminary, but it's uh, professors, professorial staff, you know, has been mm-hmm. fantastic. And Steve, you've come back for a Master of Divinity. When did you come back for that degree? August 2013. Right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. So it took me about two and a half years to graduate. And part of that was because some of my classes from the previous degree also uh, sufficed for some of the requirements. Mm-hmm. And so that were you... In between the two degrees, were you in one location generally that that whole period? We were in Seattle, uh, Washington, for about a year and a half, and then we moved to uh, Cameron, Missouri, for the remainder of that. For nine time. years. About gotcha. Mm-hmm. Nine years. That's awesome. Good long stand. Um, so you finished mm-hmm. your your MDiv, and. Um, did you happen to go back for any classes as well when you guys came back? Um, I took one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually took um, Baptist Faith and History, um, partly because I wanted to feel out and see if I wanted to get a Master of Arts in Educational Leadership. Mm-hmm. I decided I did not. Mm-hmm. Um, not because I didn't enjoy the class. I actually really enjoyed the class and learned a lot. But just um, being a full-time employee and a mom of two children, um, it was it just would have been too much for me to, to get a full degree. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I did take one class. Um, I guess I technically I took two. I did do an independent study um, of an early childhood education class, which I needed for my um, California credential. Mm-hmm. So, but that was um, basically I was was working my job, and I kind of, you know, read a book and wrote some papers on right. what I did in the classroom. So, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But um, but technically, I did get uh, credit for that as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. My wife had a similar experience where she uh, we got here, and then after I think at the beginning of the second year, she said, "Hey, I think I want to go back and get some more school. Mm-hmm. I miss school." And I said, "Great." Uh, why don't you take a course with me or something? Mm-hmm. So she decided, I'll take one. And she took New Testament mm-hmm. with uh, Dr. Malik with me, mm. uh, the introduction class. Uh-huh. And she loved the first semester and said, man, that was a lot of work. And then we started the second semester of the of the same course, second half. And she said, yeah, 
Yeah, that was good. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Steve and I took it together, the Baptist faith and history. And, um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I learned a lot because I wasn't raised um, Baptist. I didn't become a Christian until my senior year of high school. And so mm. there was a lot of Baptist history that I didn't know. So it was mm. very, very interesting. But, yeah, I didn't want to have to be writing papers and taking tests, you know, at 10 o'clock after the boys were in bed, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it no, there'll be another time for that, maybe, but but not now. <laughs> I can understand that. Yeah. <laughs> um, have you done any other work or study or teaching with the seminary or any of its programs? Oh, you've um, taught it with uh, San Quentin. Yeah, I've mm -hmm. had the opportunity to teach uh, now three different classes mm -hmm. out at uh, the San Quentin prison through the Contextualized Leadership Development Program at Golden Gate, and um, that was a that was a really new experience. I had never done um, you know twelve to a twelve to fifteen week class. I had taught mm -hmm. some weekend seminars mm -hmm. that might have you know three sessions of an hour and a half each, yeah. mm -hmm. but twelve to fifteen <laughs> you know two and a half hour classes each. That was a that was a learning experience that had a bit of a learning curve to it, but it was good. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Nice. And he's also taught, like he said, some conferences. Um, with like the California Baptist Convention, some mm -hmm. worship leader things, um, just kind of in addition. Yeah. yeah. Well, very good. Now, now that we've gotten a little bit of a feel for who you are and where you've come from, uh, what are some of your favorite memories studying or working here at this campus? So some of the people we've interviewed have been at other campuses. Mm -hmm. I did my MDiv at the the Brea campus, mm. uh, we're, we're really trying to get the memories here. So mm. tell us mm -hmm. some about those memories. Um, well, one of my things that I've really um, enjoyed this time around, I think um, the first time, we, you know, we were so new to California. It was so different for us. I think we stayed on campus a lot more mm -hmm. than we have this time around. Mm -hmm. Now that we're a little older, we have children, we've really gotten out more into the community, you know, not only for some fun things, but just, um, you know, our boys are in school. Um, mm -hmm. Our oldest son plays baseball mm -hmm. um, with the Tiburon Little League. And so we've gotten to really meet some families. We've gotten to really connect with um, some people here, and I've really enjoyed that. I, I was worried as a, you know, young, naive <laughs> Missourian that coming out to California, you know, we just would, you know, would face hostility towards Christianity mm -hmm. and things like that. And I really haven't haven't seen that. I, I feel mm -hmm. like the people here really enjoy talking about spiritual things. I think they consider themselves spiritual, but not necessarily religious. And I think that when they hear that we're in the ministry, when they hear that we're Christians, um, they enjoy talking to us. And, and that kind of piques their interest a little bit. So I actually feel like we've had more witnessing and spiritual conversation opportunities um, mm -hmm. the second time around than we had the first time around, but also than we had back in Missouri. I feel like um, this environment here in Mill Valley and in Marin County um, is a very good one for spiritual conversations um, and that's that's been something that we've both enjoyed very mm. much I agree with that 100 percent and um, so I think I'll kind of share from a different perspective mm -hmm. but I agree with that completely um, some of the when I think about some of the memories that, that are favorite with regard to the seminary mm -hmm. um, first time and second time you know it's really been um, tremendous the, the relationships that we made here mm -hmm. I think that when you when you asked me what were some of your favorites it went back to my mind went back to the first time that we were here we lived in Titchener village mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so you know married with with no kids at the time and all that we lived in the center building mm -hmm. um, all the way at the end, end out towards the water and yeah. on the second floor and so we we could um, see water from both ends of our apartment we yes. loved it <laughs> yes and so just like there is today we had kind of front and center view of the mill valley airport with the water out here and the, <laughs> the airplane that takes off but that was that was really cool then but um we just we got to know you know most all of the families, mm -hmm. um, the married couples that were there in Titchener at the time, and kind of in the same stage of life, mm -hmm. and um, you know some more than others, and and some even families that we still keep yep. in touch with and have mm -hmm. visited in the places that they have moved to and all that. And so, um, 
um, I and, and just living young, kind of a young young life together. Um, you know, there were even among families sometimes, even among these young couples, um, you know, medical emergencies that mm-hmm. we got to be a part of in terms of you know praying for one another and providing meals from one another mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. things like that. And really taught us how to live in community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So just having a and, and even you know we um, went up to uh, we went bowling sometimes together as Titchener Village. You know. <laughs> um, I was actually out of the country on a mission trip, but I understand that um, Grace got to be a part of um, a group that did like a video scavenger hunt back in that day. For the 4th of July. We did a pyramid on the Golden Gate Bridge. That was one of the things we had to do. And just, you know, fun, dumb things that the people back home were like, what? (laughs) But yeah, just really living in community and and, um, meeting people who were in the same place, but also had the same vision, you know, for their future, whether they were, you know, preparing for overseas missions, whether they were preparing for ministry in the States, you know, whatever their individual, you know, roles were going to be that we were all studying together. And it was, yeah, it was neat. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Now, this next question you can kind of take um, more literally or more uh, abstractly, whichever you prefer or both. We've had many people answer with both. But what is your most prized achievement that you earned while at this campus? It could be either on your first stay here mm-hmm. or this this one, the second one. Um, so some folks mm-hmm. have, ta- have told us about uh, a literal uh, like achievement, like an award they can put mm-hmm. on a shelf, mm-hmm. and other people have talked about experiences they've had or um, so a particular thing they learned or mm-hmm. what have you. Um, so what do you think? Your most prized achievement you earned while at this campus. Well, I'll share three quick things. Sure. <laughs> um, the first time that I was here, and I had the I, I pursued and accomplished, completed the Master of Arts in Worship Leadership degree. Um, I uh, you know I really feel like it it um, lived up to its name and its promise. You know what I mean? Um, I think back on it, and um, and so that was uh, for having. You know, before we came out here, having no expectation that I would ever go to seminary, it wasn't a dream of mine or anything like that. It just kind of, um, so I, it would surprise me as much as anybody that I was at seminary that time. And so to have completed that degree, it was a real blessing. Um, that was a good experience. Um, but I feel like even the second time, I kind of, there's a couple accomplishments that I hold maybe even um, greater regard for. Um <laughs> One was simply completing the degree itself, the MDiv, yeah. because um, I remember, you know, in part um, getting the the, M, the MDiv. I'm sorry, the the mall degree the first time because I thought it was something that I that I could do. It was playing to my strengths. Mm-hmm. It was squarely yeah. within my interests, mm-hmm. um, and very so very music focused. Very which, music yeah. focused, mm-hmm. and um, you know, and so that was that, that was the whole degree was just a, jo- a joy in that regard. Mm-hmm. Um, but and, and pushed me. To a certain degree, mm-hmm. but not to my nth degree. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Not to my highest point and all that. So I was very thankful to have made it through that. But um, when I started having the de- desire over the next 10 years to come back and do the MDiv, uh, there was a lot about it that really uh, intimidated me, you know? Um, I uh, I didn't, I thought maybe I was in over my head in a lot of the subjects that we would discuss, you know, Greek and Hebrew <laughs> and yeah. preaching. I had never really done any preaching and and, and numerous other classes, um, hermeneutics and things like that, that I just, and yet the 10 years between degree one and degree two had really put a desire within me that I wanted to know about those things. Mm-hmm. I did want, even as hard as it was, <clears throat> I wanted to learn about the Greek because I loved um, when I would hear preachers share a, a Greek portion or a Hebrew passage and, and talk about the meanings of the words and all that. And I just felt like I was going to be forever dependent on when someone thought to put that in their message Mm -hmm. unless I got to learn about it myself. Mm -hmm. And um, I had opportunities to do some public speaking and some some public Bible studies in in nursing homes and facilities Mm -hmm. like that. And um, and, and so I did learn a lot of that, weddings and funerals, but Mm -hmm. I learned a lot of that kind of speaking in the heat of the moment and all that. And I just (laughs) thought, man, some training. So it's like... Um, all of these things that really made me nervous, situations in my life brought me to the point where it's just like, you know, whatever it, kind of whatever it costs, I want to learn about mm-hmm. those things. Mm-hmm. And so every class that I took in my MDiv was 
very challenging, mm -hmm. but well worth the work. Mm -hmm. And um, and so when graduation day, and we're coming up on another graduation day tomorrow, mm -hmm. and, I, and and actually it's the it's the graduation day tomorrow after mine, you In know, December. six months ago mm -hmm. or whatever. And I just I, I see some of those who are graduating, and I think. You know, man, you really should enjoy it mm -hmm. tomorrow because I know how special that day was for me. And I don't know how many times I have, you know, gloried in my moments or whatever. Mm -hmm. But my goodness, I just I wore it that whole day because <laughs> it, it felt like when I started, I remember looking at this mountain from afar, um, this you know metaphorical mountain for a, a long time and thinking, I don't, you know, kind of kicking the dust at the bottom and thinking, <laughs> man, it be nice to try, <laughs> and uh, man, when I had, when I had done it, I really was proud of myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, um, just because I did, I didn't think I could do it, and um, and yet God had brought me to the top of the mountain with a lot of hard work mm -hmm. and a lot of help from a lot of friends. <laughs> um, I think that I spent more time in my first week in the library oh here uh, that I had in my entire degree yes, the first it's time. It's very true. It's very true. And now I find myself wanting to go there just because I enjoy it. And so, so that's my second thing. My final last thing is because we came back to the, that we came back for this MDiv in large part because I wanted to grow even in my relationship with God. All of these things that I've talked about were certainly helpful from their ministerial skill vantage point, but also because um, not only is the Greek and the Hebrew and other things, hermeneutics and all that, valuable as ministerial tools, but they're also tremendously valuable in our faith, just to understand God's work better. And yeah. that was really at the core of what I wanted. And so I feel like certainly Golden Gate helped to contribute to grow me as a minister, but I'm very thankful that it helped me to grow in my relationship with God. And it helps me to be a better husband. It helps me to be a better father. And it helps me to pass these things on um, and uh, hopefully to, to be a servant. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. very, I'm very thankful to Golden Gate for what they have provided in many different ways. Mm -hmm. awesome. mm -hmm. great. For me, I think it's more, you know, I wasn't a student, you know, I mean, I, I am proud of the early childhood education certificate, yeah, yeah. but I mean, that was just a blast. Like that was my, my favorite <laughs> things to do and I got to take classes on it, you know. Um, so I, I, I loved it. I loved every minute of it. But um, I think for me, especially this time around, especially having children, um, I have been really proud of the way our children have adapted to life here and the way our children have lived for Christ here. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, brief examples, you know, our oldest son is in the public school system mm -hmm. here in Mill Valley, which is an amazing school system. He's made wonderful friends. Um, but I mean, his friends know he's a Christian. He has missed baseball practice and even baseball games if they fall on Wednesday nights or Sundays. Mm -hmm. He has done um, projects in school. I, I remember one, his first year here, they had to share about a Christmas tradition and he shared about going to church and singing songs about God. And he had Steve come in and they taught the class a worship song. <laughs> and I mean, he, I just feel like he has really lived out his faith here and has had that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And then Caleb to a lesser degree, you know, being so young, he yeah. just turned five. But um, we were swimming with friends the other day, and <laughs> it's kind of a funny story, but it just it shows how he, he got to go to Golden Gate um, because I worked there. He got to go to Golden Gate Academy um, all three years, and so he gets Bible you know classes every day at, at school. Yeah. And um, we were swimming with friends, and another boy that he didn't know was taking a friend's watch, and they were just playing, you know, but Caleb was, was saying, you need to give him his watch back. And all of a sudden, I hear him say, the Bible tells us to love one another. And I'm just thinking, okay, four-year-old, you know, little preacher boy. But, um, but, but it's, it's in his heart, you know. And so I'm, I'm, I, I guess that's not an accomplishment on my part, but just that our boys are growing up in an environment where they are hearing about God's Word, um, both at school and at home and at church. And, um, and that foundation is being built in their lives, and they're, they're not afraid to... To share it, and um, and yeah, that makes me proud. Yeah, raising kids is a bit of an accomplishment. Yeah, well, I'd that's say. true. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> uh, before the announced sale of the Mill Valley campus on April first, twenty fourteen, what was your impression of the relationship between the seminary and the seminary community at this campus and our neighbors? Um, I think I might have heard more about it just because I was an employee, not just a student. Um, I obviously knew nothing about the sale pending or anything like that, but I knew that the seminary had been um, 
trying to work things out with the community, trying to, you know, work out a compromise of what they could build or how they could maintain their facilities um, and that the community was putting up a lot of roadblocks. Um, I don't believe that was because we were Christians, because they do it to other people, too. Um, So I never really I, I didn't know a lot about that, but I knew that there had been you know, some some legal struggles and, and, and the financial struggles that go along with that just in trying to reach a compromise with the community. But um, that's really all I knew. Obviously, we didn't, it didn't trickle down to the preschool much. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Steve, what about yeah. you? That's about the same <clears throat> for me. I remember um, after we came back, you know, um, so the first time or two that I was in chapel, um, I remember hearing uh, Dr. Orge mention something about, you know, the, the issues with the neighbors Mm -hmm. and the, the legal wranglings, Mm -hmm. you know, thereof. Um, and that had been news to me, you know, Mm -hmm. I, I didn't, I didn't know anything about that. And so slowly got to hear, Mm -hmm. you know, a few more details about that, but I was just, that was news to me that there was even anything going on, but that's because we had not lived here previously. And it Mm -hmm. wasn't really an issue when we were here before 10, 11 years ago, there, there wasn't any, Mm -mm. To our knowledge. To our, to our knowledge. knowledge. To our knowledge, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Well, how did uh, your imp- that impression change, if at all, mm-hmm. um, after Dr. Orge announced the sale? Um, well, for me, I was in the employee meeting when he announced the sale. Um, yeah. That was the first I'd heard of it, and, and I, a lot of us were just very shocked. I mean, it... Um, I never in a million years would have thought that they were selling the land. Um mm-hmm. I think some of us thought maybe they were going to sell Titchener or maybe they were going to, you know, some, you know, yeah, some yeah. other things to try and get some more finances to continue this. Maybe burn Titchener down. In maybe Minnesota. burn Titchener down. I don't know. I don't know. But. <laughs> pile of magic anyway. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> but, um, but I think that just, you know, after the announcement, I think just realizing the, um, the amount of time and money that the seminary had put into trying to stay here. Um, You know, that it was not, excuse me, it was not a, you know, quick decision, obviously. It was not a, you know, ill thought out decision. I mean, it was really a last resort, um, you know, and, and just that it seemed to be a last resort, but the right decision because of all these other things that had been going on. So I think it was more for me just a realization of how big and deep an issue it was um, after the sale was announced, Mm -hmm. that that, that they felt like there was no other solution besides selling the land and and moving. Yeah. Steve, do you have anything else to share about that? Um, Not really. I guess I... um, Yes, it was a it was a shock. Um, I didn't, but in light of what we had heard, you know, mm-hmm. mostly through probably probably chapel announcements and mm-hmm. things like that, of just how long this had been going on with mm-hmm. what seemed like no resolution in mm-hmm. sight, um, it seemed like that you know was a a reasonable conclusion, mm-hmm. you know, and um, and it sounded like it was going to you know provide a, a lot of opportunities for the for the seminary. And so, and, and one of the things that I heard was mentioned was, you know, that the, the mission of the seminary is not to fight legal battles. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if that had become, you know, a, a large or a portion, you know, to whatever degree had become lodged in the necessity, you know, necessary actions of the seminary, then those, you know, time and energy was not being able to be spent um, on the mission. And so mm-hmm. I, I understood all that, mm-hmm. you know. Did you participate in any of the discussion behind the scenes on selling the property? No. No, no neither not of us had any Mm-mm. dealings with that. Mm-hmm. What was your opinion uh, about the... Yeah, we have... Let's cut this. Uh, <laughs> sorry. It is really close to uh, the move. Mm. Um, The library shuts down Monday. Wow. Uh, Mm. Has your opinion changed regarding the sale since it was announced? I think it's become more real. Um, It's not just hypothetical anymore. Mm. 
Um, you know, it's one thing to say, yeah, I think it was the right decision. And I do. I, I think it's best for the seminary. Um, but then on a personal level, you start to feel it a little bit more. I know for me, um, Golden Gate Academy is not going down south. So, um, you know, our last day of Golden Gate Academy is next Friday, the 27th. Wow. And so my job is terminating first and foremost, but also this preschool that's been here for 56 years serving the community is no longer going to be here. And that's sad, you know, and, and, and you can feel that and you can mourn that because it really did have a important ministry here. Um, again, that doesn't mean I think that this is the wrong decision, but I think the closer we get to that time, the feelings come into play more. Mm -hmm. And um, and you have to you have to go through those stages of grief. Mm -hmm. um, it's still a good outcome. Uh, it's still, I think, going to be good for the seminary moving forward. But, you know, for me personally, as a teacher at Golden Gate Academy, um, yeah, it's sad. And, yeah. and, and I'm going to miss, I'm going to miss that part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Steve? Um, good question. I don't, I don't know that my, you know, thoughts have changed a whole lot. I, I agree that, um, you know, seeing... It's kind of amazing to be here at this moment and see um, <clears throat> this all take place mm -hmm. since we heard this announcement two years ago. Mm -hmm. you know, and I remember at that particular point just feeling like, oh, you knew it was coming, but it was like two years down the road. Mm -hmm. And now we are there at that point. And so just uh, being able, you know, just seeing all of the, the packing up and, mm -hmm. and seeing all of the friends moving, friends moving mm -hmm. and seeing the the U-Haul trucks mm -hmm. show up and go. leave, mm -hmm. which those trucks have not been, uh, you know, strangers to this campus because sure. for, for all of its time, <laughs> you know, people have come and gone and mm -hmm. left and all that. But just to know yeah. that the people are, are leaving and, and no one else is coming is mm -hmm. kind of a, God, that's kind of a surprising, mm -hmm. you know, feeling to that. But, you know, um, I, I still think that it's a, that it had all of its right reasons mm -hmm. it just even the right reasons have their it, it's still challenging sometimes just to watch even the best reasons you mm -hmm. know sure. play go out. to play out thank you that's the yeah. <laughs> and I think for us you know we're in kind of a unique position in that you know when we came back the first, you know the second time we thought we'd be like any other student you mm -hmm. come you get your degree and then you go somewhere well Steve was hired at Tiburon Baptist Church and so we're staying yeah. and so we're we're staying here and seeing the seminary and everybody with it leaving. Yeah, you're not leaving. The we're seminary. not leaving. Yeah, the and so exactly, you. <laughs> and so that's a little a little surreal. Um, yeah. But it's also in a way I won't say exciting, but I think it is. It's it's going to be interesting and exciting to see how the churches step up to the plate without the seminary here. Mm -hmm. um, to have their back, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that the churches have had two years to prepare and be ready. And so I am excited to see, you know, what's going to come when all of these little individual Baptist churches here in Marin County, and there's not a ton, but there yeah. are some, you know, when they really start doing the work themselves mm -hmm. and, and growing up those lay leaders within their congregations. And um, instead of one big light on the hill, we'll have all these little lights, you know, um, yeah. shining brighter and brighter and brighter. And so, so it is exciting to yeah. see, see what the future is going to bring. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's sad too. Cause, cause everybody's leaving us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just going to say, say um, you know, this whole experience probably makes everybody very, very nostalgic. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I just, I look at all the houses, um, on campus and, uh, just wind up thinking about all of the different people that have come through mm -hmm. this seminary and just how, um, where, where has God spread them, mm -hmm. you know, for generations over the globe and all that. And so, um, you know, there's just amazing to look around and see all the history and, and obviously the sister, the, the seminary is going to continue and right. it's just relocating and all that. Yeah. But just remembering that, um, amazing things have happened on this. This is, <coughs> Regardless of what happens in the future, it will always be hallowed ground yeah. in some mm -hmm. form of fashion. I believe they're graduating their nine thousandth graduate this wow. this term. Yeah. So yeah. 
Uh, I mean, this isn't the only location where there are right. graduates, right? Right. We have the four other campuses at this time, and <laughs> even before then, the um, original campus was in uh, Oakland and Berkeley mm-hmm. before it was right. here. Yeah. But still, the vast majority of those graduates uh, walked through these halls, right. yeah. lived or traveled to this campus, right. and studied with these professors and their predecessors. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I think that's. Um, it's something powerful that we're all kind of processing to mm-hmm. at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you hope the seminary will prioritize as the seminary moves forward? Well, I think kind of what Steve said earlier, um, you know, when we when we got down to them announcing the sale and they really talked about um, the mission of the seminary was not legal battles. The mission of the seminary was not fighting with the neighbors, you know, there were there were other things that they wanted to focus on. And so I think if, if the seminary prioritizes that, you know, prioritizes their mission and their focus and their focus being training leaders to take the gospel of Christ everywhere, you know, overseas, next door, everywhere. And their mission and their priority is to pour into those students that those students can then disperse and pour into others. Um, I think that, that that needs to be their priority moving forward. And I think that's one of the, the big reasons why, um, why they chose to relocate mm-hmm. is so that that could be their priority again. Um, so I hope they keep that, you know, the, the new buildings are great and, sure. and the furnishings are great and the, you know, it's exciting and, and the new positions and everything. That's all wonderful. The new name, everything that comes along with it. Um, but the reason they made this decision is so that they could focus on the students and preparing them, you know, to minister yeah. wherever yeah. God calls them. So I think if they keep that first and in, in forefront, then, um, it's going to be successful wherever they are. Mm-hmm. I agree with Grace 100% that, um, as the seminary moves forward, we just want to see it prioritize the same mission that she described right there of sharing mm-hmm. Um, just as it has, it will just mm-hmm. be, you know, hopefully continuing the same mission, just in a different location, right. you know, and yeah. perhaps its history was, you know, in, uh, servicing and, and preparing leaders for, you know, the Western United States and obviously the satellite, you know, campus is mm-hmm. kind of, um, it, this is the seminary, the Southern Baptist Seminary that is, you know, West of the Rockies and, mm-hmm. and all that good stuff. And yeah. so, but also incorporates students from all over this country and mm-hmm. internationally as mm-hmm. well. And so I just think <laughs> may it continue to do what it has always done, just in a different location, yeah. in, in one new location, <laughs> all the rest of the, yeah. so. Well, and we hope that for each and every one of us as well. Yes. Uh, for you guys here in Marin as you stay, and uh, Jonathan as he goes over to the for East more. Bay, mm-hmm. and uh, for my family with wherever we live. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so... We want to thank you again for your time. We know that you guys have pretty full schedules and <laughs> you have kids and not a ton of child care around. To they stayed in their them. room. They stayed We're in their room. We're happy about that. Talk. We're real grateful for them. Maybe I'll slip <laughs> them a, 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 a parent approved uh, <laughs> lollipop or there something. There you go. Hey, your mom and dad said thank you. Good job. There you go. So. Um, well, thank you guys for yeah. thinking of this project and, and for allowing us the opportunity to reflect on Golden Gate Baptist Theological yeah. Seminary because it has been a formative place and mm-hmm. experience in our family's life twice. And, yeah, yeah <laughs> I mean, think about it for the past 15 years, either being here or remembering being here or then being back here. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks thank for asking us much. to do this. Yeah, thank you for taking the time. Yeah. That was Steve and Grace Howell. It was real interesting to me to get their their take on everything. Uh, this was our second interview with a, a, a couple. So our yeah. first one was Dr. Kent Philpot and Katie Philpot. Um, we released that episode a few weeks ago. They were they were very interesting and had some very uh, deep history with the seminary, but also Mill Valley and the greater county. Um, and now we have Stephen Grace, and they give us another married couple's perspective. So they, each married couple, experienced the seminary in ways that are similar and also ways that are very distinct because of 
different periods in time and Mm -hmm. um, different life situations. Uh, When Katie Philpott was a student here, she wasn't yet Katie Philpott. She wasn't married to Kent at the time. Um, And she, she got her education here in between the two periods when the Howells came. And uh, Dr. Philpot, Kent Philpot, came uh, further back. So it's it's very interesting for me personally, at least, to hear all of these different angles, even simply from these four people on the seminary and its relationship with the neighbors. Agreed. I really enjoyed hearing how Grace really had God opening doors for yeah. her to to move into the uh, the MAEL and the certificate program and the work with the preschool. Yeah. The right things happened at the right time for them to be able to fulfill their purpose. Yeah. And we see again the significant impact that Dr. Shira Malik had on even more students and staff in her time here. I think the the big takeaway from that portion is that a seminary isn't property it's faculty yeah. it's the faculty and the students and the interaction that this place has helped foster mm-hmm. but it's that interaction right if we had completely different people this location would have been a completely different seminary that's right so I really enjoyed what they had to share. It was interesting. They're very humble people who I think were trying to answer our questions without seeming braggadocious or uh, or assuming in any way, which is awesome. Um, But they have a cool story. They've served God faithfully for years now, and their church is lucky to have them. Agreed. They they've done wonderful ministry, and I I think they will be a blessing to the to Tiburon, and wherever else they are able to bless in their their future years of ministry. Yeah, that's right. Well, our next episode will be with Miguel Rodriguez, pastor of Lincoln Hill Community Church of San Rafael, California. Miguel is also an alumnus of Golden Gate Baptist Theological Seminary and previously served as a staff member for the Contextualized Leadership Program, which we will discuss in more detail in that episode. July is a big month for us at An Oral History of the Church. Keep listening. We'll be releasing new episodes each week here on iTunes, YouTube, or your favorite podcasting app. Episode 12 with Miguel Rodriguez will be available one week from today on July 29th, our last big push week for an oral history of the church. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll let you know <laughs> in the future episodes whether we're going to continue with the weekly format or revert to our every two weeks format. We know you have a variety of podcasts that you can choose to listen to. We thank you for for taking your time to, to listen to these podcasts. If you've enjoyed it, keep listening and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. If you think this has been a valuable uh, part of your commute or however you choose to listen to your podcast, rate and review This way you can share your discoveries with other people. That's right. It really does help us and other people if you do that. Well, we're going to wrap it up here on our end. May God bless you as you go. He's already gone before. (laughs) 